all came to a standstill from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We saw nations close their doors, businesses shutting down, and millions losing their lives over the last two years. Now, we've just started breathing easier and living in a less, less fear, and yet we may possibly relive those horrifying moments. This comes after monkeypox has been linked to over a dozen deaths around the world. But what does this now mean going forward? Is this another pandemic waiting to happen? Professor Alex van den Heerfer from the Progressive Health Forum joins us now for more. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Should we be concerned? Well, I think you just have to be concerned taking into account the, the, the nature of, the, of, of monkeypox transmission. It's not the same as COVID, which is airborne. Monkeypox trans transmission requires uh, an exchange, potentially an exchange of fluids, very, very close bodily contact. So it's not the same, and therefore the levels of transmission are unlikely to be anywhere close to COVID. And the number of deaths relative to the number of infections is, consider is, is pretty low as well. It it's sort of works out at about, uh, you know, about, out of about sort of 58,000 detected cases, only about 18 deaths. So it's only people who are severely immunocompromised that tend to die from it. Uh, so, yes, it is, a, it is an issue to watch. Um, and it is important that we um, maintain strong surveillance of it in South Africa, but it's unlikely to have the same kind of impact as COVID did. Um, now that it is becoming warmer in South Africa, um, I think also a lot of you know, overseas visitors might be visiting. There might be um, a lot of parties happening, festivals, where there will be a lot of people in close contact with each other. Um, you know, so, so could this also be a concern going forward into the summer months for South Africa? I, I don't expect it to be a serious concern. I mean, as I said, one does want to prevent transmission and further spread by um, identifying it when it does occur. So it will be notified. Uh, but I don't think that it is going to be as widespread. I mean, it can't be basically technically as widespread because transmission, uh, when it requires physical contact, is, is uh, considerably slower. The only issue is that whether or not the uh, transmission is going to occur while people are asymptomatic and they're in close physical contact. So there will probably be some cases, but I, 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 it will not bring South Africa to a standstill. That is very, very improbable. Um, is, you know, monkeypox is probably a concern for people with a weaker immune system, right? It's a, so flu, COVID, um, most sort of uh, infections are going to be a problem for people who are immune compromised. Uh, their, if their immune systems are out of balance, then essentially they have uh, the possibility that, you know, they're going to develop severe illness. Uh, and that will tend to um, occur with age and it will occur with uh, people who have underlying medical conditions such as diabetes, etc. So all people in those situations have to be careful about whether or not they're in infected uh, generally. So they should be avoiding and uh, protecting themselves against flus, COVID, uh, Etc. They're also. It's not necessarily going to be the case that they're going to be in. Uh, they're not necessarily a high risk group for transmission. Um, in the case of monkeypox, but obviously people should be very wary if they're in high risk settings or with a group of people who are likely to be high risk in nature. So one should just be careful. Um, that's all one can do. And I and I'm pretty sure. I think our surveillance systems really reasonably good in the case of. Um, this kind of transmission, this kind of infection. It's, it's far more difficult in the case of COVID, which, which infects people so swiftly um, that you really can't keep, keep track of it um, as it kind of sweeps through. And with flus, where many people don't get severely ill, they don't, you never even detect them through a surveillance system. Mm. Let's talk about um, vaccin the vaccination process when it comes to monkey monkeypox as well. For those who still you know, don't know if there is a vaccine or what is the vaccine that one should take? Because we did hear previously that um, just normal um, pox vax is, 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 you know, something that you, you can be taking. But also when somebody does have monkey pox, what are those treatments that, that one does to, to make sure that you are in the green zone, if I might call it that? Sorry, I'm, I'm not going to comment on, on treatments uh, as such, given that uh, I work in health economics and, mm -hmm. and sort of public health. 
but uh, I, I think that this it what it, what appears to be the case is that they that there are reasonable treatments that that is indicated by the relatively low mm. mortality rates overall. Um, whether or not one wants to get sort of mass vaccinated in the case of monkeypox, uh, it's not the, it's not the same type of issue as uh, as for instance COVID or even flu. Um, in that many very few people are really going to be in, in in a setting where they are going to be infected. So really, it's going to be treatment issues that are going to be most important. And the, and the main thing is making sure that if somebody does detect systems, that they get treatment very, very quickly, uh, rather than waiting. All right. Thank you so much for giving us an update there. That was Professor Alex van den from the Progressive Health Forum.